Hi, I'm Raj, and it's great to see you here. Open source apps are pretty hard to learn from because they're usually built by multiple people and are often too large to get into. But there are some open source apps which are fairly small in size, and it's easy for you to learn from them. And in this content, we're going to talk about an open source project that's built on top of AI and TypeScript that's also fairly small in size. And I think it's going to be a great learning resource for you. This app that we're going to talk about is built on top of OpenAI's function calling feature. So before we jump into the project, let me give you a brief about function calling feature and what you can do with it. Function calling is kind of like an agent-based LLM implementation. And instead of making an LLM do a simple text generation, we incorporate tools or functions into its workflow. So if a function calling is enabled, you essentially pass a series of function definitions and description as part of the input token in your LLM API call. And when it's time to call a function or a series of functions, the LLM responds with the JSON data of the function name and the arguments it needs to pass inside the function. And these functions run on our server and return the output of the function callback back to LLM. And using this output, it would either go forward to call the next function or give us a text answer. Also, these functions could technically have access to all the resources that our servers have access to. For example, if you go to the OpenAI's Node.js package, there is a section called Automated Function Calling. And here you can see that we have two functions called Get Current Location and Get Weather, defined as part of the input tools of the API. And at the time it needs to call the function, the assistant responds with a function to be called with the arguments it needs to pass. And this function runs on a Node.js server, and the output value of this function call is returned back to the LLM. And then it uses the return value as an argument to call the next function in the sequence. This kind of smart tool usage unlocks a lot of use cases for AI-powered apps. And one such open source app that's built on top of function calling feature and TypeScript is called AutoPlaywright. At first glance, it might look like a big open source project, but in fact, it's a fairly small open source project that is super easy to understand. First, let's quickly understand what's Playwright. Playwright is an end-to-end -end testing library that allows you to test your app, like a user would test your app by running it on a browser. And it comes with two important APIs, page and locator. The page carries the instance of the browser and locators are APIs to find your DOM elements on the page using DOM selectors on the page. These two APIs are the backbone of Playwright. For example, when you write a test, you would do something like this, where you locate the element using a specific selector and perform actions on top of it. And Auto Playwright removes this conventional page locator and selector combination and does all the work for you. Instead of writing this yourself, you call an API called Auto, and pass the instruction along with the page and the test instances. And the AI will complete the instruction for you. So how does it work? When you use auto API and pass instructions along with the page, we get a snapshot of the page and pass that as part of the input prompt. And along with the input, we also pass a series of functions to create the locators and perform actions on the locators. The instruction inside the prompt just tells the LLM to look at the task and create the selectors for the task by looking at the DOM snapshot and locate the elements based on the selector and perform actions on the locators. These functions work together so well because they have access to the instance of the current page or the current browser state and also the memory of the located elements inside the locator map. For example, if we tell it to click on a submit button, first it will create a selector by looking at the DOM snapshot of the page. And then it will use the locate element function and pass the CSS selector as an argument and create a random UUID and also create locator inside the locator map and return the elements ID. The next function locates a click would be called with the elements ID as an argument and get the locator from the locator map and a click is performed. In order for you to understand it better, I've just made a sample test here where you can see that I'm trying to perform actions in my test using Auto API. Each action would change the state of the browser through some event. Uh, first, I want to click on the About page of my shop, and then I want to add a pair of socks to the shopping cart. 
And then I want to click on the shopping cart. And finally, I want to check if I have items in my shopping cart. If I run it, you can see that it runs all the tests one by one. The red dot implies that it's being clicked. And once done, we get the information that the test is passed. As you can see, we ran the auto API three times. And also every time it chose to call a specific function or functions based on the state of the browser or in playwright's terms, the page. At the last auto call, it ran a request query function in order to get value for the assertion. I will also add the sample test in the description below. You can play around with the code and let me know what you think. If you learn the code base of auto playwright, I think it'd be easy for you to build tools like smart data collectors and data scrapers. And also you will learn how to add tools to your AI and give them ability to access the resources on your service. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more and I will talk to you soon.